Hello, I'm Mylon Studart and welcome to the special report on concussions. They have been much more prominent in the news lately. The National Football League, National Hockey League and the media are finally paying attention to the effects of head trauma in sports. Concussions, also known as traumatic brain injury and its more serious counterpart chronic traumatic encephalopathy or CTE was discovered in 2002 by Dr. Bennett Omalu and Dr. Julian Bales. A concussion is most often caused by a sudden, direct blow or bump to the head. The human brain is made of soft tissue and it's cushioned by spinal fluid and encased in the protective shell of the skull. When someone sustains a concussion, the impact can jolt your brain, causing it to hit the wall of your skull, often moving it around your head, resulting in injury. Traumatic brain injuries can cause bruising of the brain, damage to the blood vessels, and injury to the nerves. CTE is a result of cumulative damage to the brain, so a person with CTE likely had several concussions throughout an extended or even short period of time. Currently, CTE can only be diagnosed on autopsy after death. Symptoms of a concussion which is caused by cumulative damage to the brain. It was technology that enabled doctors to discover the disease in 2002. Until recently, concussions could not be seen or properly diagnosed by a CAT scan or MRI, although a brain hemorrhage does come up on these diagnostic tests. With new research, doctors have discovered that seeking out a specific protein, the tau protein, a substance which serves to stabilize cellular structure in the neurons, we could finally visualize a concussion with new medical equipment. Today, MRIs with diffusion tensor imaging, or DTI, show structural damage to the brain. NYIT's College of Osteopathic Medicine has heeded the warning signs of this disease and in 2015 founded the Center for Sports Medicine with a specific focus on concussion diagnosis, management, and treatment. Today, NYIT held a concussion conference seminar moderated by Dr. Hallie Zuibel, the director of the new Center for Sports Medicine. Dr. Zweibel is emphasizing concussion diagnosis and treatment for his medical students, student athletes, and for the general public. And here we're lucky enough to have some of our partners like Bob Nystrom, who's a retired New York Islander, to talk more to the general public, to increase their knowledge so they can become aware of all the things that are out there, to help people recognize, A, that they have concussion, and realize that there are things we can do to intervene and get them back to the activities they love. There's a lot of emphasis on return to play, but that students are, um, are student athletes, so that we really need to pay attention to the academics as well as the athletics when we're, we're encouraging the student to return to their full activity. Well, education about concussions is crucial. Uh, for instance, most people don't realize that you do not need to lose consciousness in order to suffer a concussion. So teaching them about the common signs and symptoms about concussions is important, but we also want them to learn that there are things we can do in terms of diagnosis and treatment. We're definitely familiar with the treatment that takes place here. Uh, prior to the season, we have gotten together, the doctors and us, at our staff at LIU Post, and we have uh, come up with a protocol for return to play uh, progression. And this may include the return to learn in some instances. Sometimes it just in incorporates the balance testing. And we are now doing some of the osteopathic medicine on some of our kids who choose to do that type of thing with them. Former NHL New York Islanders players Bob Nystrom, Pat LaFontaine, 
Clark Gillies and Steve Webb shared their stories on living with concussions. Well, first of all, it's because I've, I've had so many concussions and, you know, you do worry about it as you read more and more in the paper about, you know, people committing suicide and things like that. And, you know, I, I think with the facility here, with the equipment and the testing capabilities that they have, you know, it's just a great place to, to, to you know, suggest people use, you know, to, to make sure that, uh, you know, they're doing the right thing. And what would what advice would you give athletes and regular students? Well, I, I think that more than anything else, it's it's you know caution to a certain extent. Uh, as we talked about before, you know people think that because they have equipment on that they're not going to get a concussion. And you know the second thing is we're we're really trying to appeal to uh, parents, you know, with their youngsters, uh, to to get some sort of baseline. Um, that they can compare to, you know, if they do have an injury or if they do have a concussion. Every person responds differently to concussions. Some are less prone and have mild concussions and symptoms, while others have intense symptoms that affect their daily lives. Many factors contribute to how a person reacts to a concussion. For example, genetic makeup, fitness, diet, and force of impact. Any type of strong impact to the brain can result in a concussion. This doesn't necessarily have to happen during sports activities. Falling on your head or hitting your head can also cause a concussion. Remember the symptoms. Confusion or feeling dazed, clumsiness, slurred speech, nausea or vomiting, headaches, balance problems or dizziness, blurred vision, sensitivity to light and sound, sluggishness, ringing in the ears, behavior or personality changes, concentration difficulties, depression and memory loss. If any of these symptoms occur, seek a physician immediately to commence a recovery regimen. Thank you for watching this special report. I'm Mylon Stewart. See you next week.